NASA is gearing up for a mission to repair the Hubble Space Telescope in orbit. We'll show you how astronauts train to become space mechanics. Hello, I'm Miles O'Brien. The stage is set for what may be NASA's biggest space challenge yet, the overhaul of the Hubble Space Telescope, planned for December. The crew of the shuttle Endeavour is wrapping up a final full-scale dress rehearsal for the repair mission. CNN's Al Himmon reports. This way. The crew of the space shuttle Endeavour is all smiles now. One, two, three. But these astronauts know the countdown's underway for NASA's most ambitious, most extensive, and likely most difficult space repair job. The December mission has a big goal. Fix the Hubble Space Telescope. If you wanted me to bet money whether we get it all done, I'd say yes. But I'm not overconfident. Shuttle payload commander Story Musgrave carefully monitors the underwater training of two fellow team members, knowing the next day he'll be in the million-gallon neutral buoyancy simulator. Okay, let's see if we can slide it through and in. Okay. Okay. Claude, you stop. Greg, okay, we're coming in. Inside the opening. Okay. Claude, stop it. Stop. We're coming in. Stop, stop, stop. Fair. Hubble is here. designed for easy, in-space, periodic servicing. But this is anything but a routine service call. We have an incredibly ambitious mission. Um, any one of the EVA days that we're preparing to do is the equivalent of an, normally an entire mission's worth of spacewalking. Getting ready for NASA's most ambitious spacewalk means the astronauts have spent a record amount of time underwater, more than 400 hours, 50% more than any previous shuttle mission. The rigorous training is aimed at giving each astronaut as much hands-on experience as possible with each task and each piece of gear. Air jets on this simulator give the push and shove feel of working in space. There's lots to learn. A design flaw in Hubble's solar power arrays produces minute vibrations that often aggravate Hubble's best-known problem, the telescope's blurred vision caused by an improperly shaped primary mirror. Okay, story, B-latch uh, door is closed, two latches made, Velcro covered back up. Okay. I'll be, I'll be right this over. day, astronauts Catherine Thornton and Tom Akers practice installing CoStar. It's the complex corrective optics package that, in combination with a new onboard camera they'll install, should restore Hubble's ability to see faint objects in distant galaxies. Other planned jobs include installing a new motion control gyroscope and upgrading the onboard computer. If you take each one of them separately, it's not terribly complex. The complexity comes from putting all of them together in the course of an 11-day mission. The astronauts say that doesn't include the added pressure of trying to restore some luster to the U.S. space program with the help of a big success on the Hubble repair mission. And so the Space Shuttle Endeavour is scheduled to rocket into orbit in the pre-dawn hours of tomorrow. Weather might be a problem. When Endeavour does go up, the crew will embark on a dramatic mission to clear a window into deep space. CNN's John Holloman has the story. The crew of Space Shuttle Endeavour knows it's good. This crew has more space shuttle experience uh, than any other space shuttle flight. We have 16 flights collectively between us. Training for more than 700 hours in underwater tanks that simulate the weightlessness of space is part of getting ready to fix the out-of-focus Hubble Space Telescope, but it's only a part. The astronauts compare their work to fixing a car in a garage. The number one rule when you go to work on your car is don't hurt yourself. Number two, for God's sake, don't break anything that isn't already broken. And then only after you get past those first two things, then you worry about fixing the problems that exist. But there are big differences between fixing the Chevy and fixing the Hubble. You think of a garage where you're out working, when you get rid of a tool or you don't want to use it anymore, you lay it down on the counter. Well, we can't do that in the payload bay. We have to keep everything tethered. 
Some of the parts are as big as a telephone booth. That makes them difficult to control. A mistake of a quarter inch could destroy a multi-million dollar part and damage the telescope permanently. NASA managers say there's something different about this mission, something that's reminiscent of the team spirit which put Americans on the moon nearly 24 years ago. People are working like a team. This has got to be the closest thing we've got today that must, must compare to Apollo. That makes me feel good. Weiler and the astronauts are optimistic, but they know the Hubble telescope has had problems from the start. A recent freak sandstorm in Florida, which threatened to contaminate the spare parts, was just one more example of Hubble trouble. Despite all the preparations, managers admit that for the Hubble to be fixed, they must also have a run of excellent luck. John Holloman, CNN, at NASA headquarters in Washington. Das Team hat sich gründlich auf den Einsatz vorbereitet. Es verbrachte mehr als 400 Stunden in Wassertanks, wo es den Ernstfall unter simulierten Bedingungen probte. Am Computer ist schon jetzt zu sehen, wie Hubble repariert wird. Doch bis es wirklich soweit ist, hat man bei der NASA vor allem Angst vor weiteren Pannen. So könnte der Robotergreifarm das 1,6 Milliarden Dollar teure Teleskop von der Größe eines Busses verlieren. Oder was, wenn Endeavour das Rendezvous mit Hubble verpasst? Der vergangene Rettungsversuch war an allzu menschlichen Problemen gescheitert. Die Crew musste vorzeitig aus dem Weltraum zurückkehren, weil die Toilettenanlage an Bord kaputt war. The Hubble Space Telescope orbits the Earth largely unfulfilled. Some telescopes on Earth get better images of the heavens than some of the pictures sent back from Hubble, a telescope that suffers from blurred vision. The Hubble has some broken gyroscopes, some useless computer memory boards, some flapping solar panels. To fix this floating space arena, NASA is sending up a repair crew. Here with more on that mission is CNN's John Holloman, who joins us from Atlanta. John. Reed, this shuttle repair mission is going to be one of the most dramatic in the history of the space program. Uh, every time I go to NASA headquarters, I was there in Washington yesterday, officials keep telling me, don't say this is a do-or-die mission for the space agency. But in fact, people who are watching the preparations for this mission certainly do think it's a do-or-die mission. The space agency has had a series of uh, well-publicized failures, and they know they certainly need some success on this mission. But the astronaut crew has been preparing for months. I talked to Ed Weiler, the NASA program scientist for this mission, who is at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center, right now preparing for the launch. Talked to him a few minutes ago. He says the weather there continues to cooperate, Reed, and he says the folks in charge of this mission, both the astronaut crew and the uh, ground-based managers, are keeping their fingers crossed that all the trouble with Hubble won't uh, continue its, uh, its sort of failed history over the next 13 or 14 days that it'll take to do the fix-up. The launch is, of course, scheduled for 4.57 Eastern time tomorrow. Reed? All right, John, is there some point along this repair route that they can declare it to be successful even if all the fixes aren't made? Yeah, there are, there are two main things they want to fix on the telescope. There's this grand piano-sized thing called the Wide Field Planetary Camera. Looks like a grand piano, weighs about 600 pounds, about what a piano weighs. And uh, the astronauts are going to have to pull the uh, old one, which works fine, but uh, isn't, uh, isn't prepared for the bad mirror in the telescope. Pull the old one out and put a new one in that has, uh, has had lenses and mirrors reground to compensate for the, uh, the failure in the main mirror of the telescope. If they can get that uh, particular unit plugged in, or another unit which has reground mirrors to make the other scientific instruments aboard the telescope work, then they will call it uh, at least a minimal success. Uh, but in addition to those two things, these uh, the pesky gyroscopes that keep the telescope fixed the way it's supposed to be in space are also failing. There's six of them on board. Three of them have gone bad. The telescope shuts down if you get down to two of them. And so uh, ground-based scientists want to want to repair, replace four of those gyroscopes to make sure they have four good ones working right away. And uh, that'll be another thing that they feel like they have to do in order to make it work. The, um, the solar panel problem, which is something they discovered r as soon as the uh, solar panel and the telescope started pointing itself to, toward the sun, um, is another problem entirely. They, uh, they're worried that one of the solar panels could rip loose. What happens is these panels are designed to, uh, to, to stay out, extended all the time. But when the telescope goes from darkness into daylight, which it does about every 45 minutes, these panels begin to ripple. They, they shake uh, as the, the, uh, the sun expands them. And that makes the telescope shake, which means the pictures that it takes are not that good. And then um, 45 minutes later, when the uh, telescope goes back into darkness, these panels shake again. Well, the new solar panels are supposed to be shake-proof. We'll see on about the uh, fifth or sixth day of the mission when the new solar panels are attached. 
All right, John, a final question. How many people will be working outside at one time on this? Well, they are prepared to have, there are four astronauts who will be doing spacewalks at some time, Reed. The plan is to have only two of them outdoors at one time, uh, that alternate days. But Story Musgrave, the 58-year-old uh, payload commander, has got uh, contingency plans for everything. He says if, for example, the robot arm doesn't work and they can't hook on to the satellite. They had this problem on an earlier mission where they had two astronauts scheduled to be outside. They brought a third astronaut outside, and instead of using this very sophisticated robot arm to grab the satellite, they just everybody took out their hands and grabbed hold of the side of it to stop it and pull it into the cargo bay. They're willing to try that, which might have three astronauts out at one time. But the plan is to have only two people outdoors at one time. All right, John Holloman, thank you from Atlanta. Sounds exciting, and we'll be watching. CNN International will have live coverage of the Endeavour's launch and all of the mission, of course. The liftoff is planned for 0957 GMT Wednesday. John Zarella has been at uh, the Kennedy Space Center for more launches than any of us. John, I see the, the wind is blowing your hair there right now. What does the weather look like to you? Time for a haircut, John. Uh, the weather looks like it's gusting to about 18 knots, which means it's in the red zone right now, according to the weather forecasters here. Out of bounds uh, for a launch, and they expect these winds to continue. The clouds are continuing to roll in and roll out of here. They feel that they might be able to get a launch off through the clouds, but the wind may not allow it. They had raised the limits from 12 to 15 in order to, for, this first mi for this mission, but that still may not be enough. And it's going to be, as we all know, a real-time call to see if they can get uh, Endeavour off the ground on this mission. We'll be keeping an eye on the weather, of course, uh, throughout the evening up to launch time. John? Okay, John Zarella, thanks very much. We'll keep checking in with you down there to see what's going on. Back to our live picture of the astronauts getting ready for this mission right now. Astronaut uh, Hoot Gibson, who's the chief of the astronaut corps, is uh, in the shuttle training airplane now. He'll be flying around also checking the weather today. If the mission can get off, Catherine, what will happen uh, this weekend is that uh, Story Musgrave, the payload commander, and his crew of three other spacewalking astronauts will attempt the toughest mission NASA astronauts have tried since they landed men on the moon more than 20 years ago. They'll go up and attempt to uh, fix the Hubble Space Telescope over five nights of six-hour spacewalks. It'll be very exciting, and we'll be here every night to bring you live coverage. John Holloman, CNN Live. The shuttle Endeavour was ready. The astronaut crew was fully prepared, but the weather at the Kennedy Space Center kept the shuttle and its crew on the ground for at least another 24 hours. High winds and low clouds in the vicinity of the launch pad and the shuttle landing strip prevented Endeavour's launch. Well, it looks like the events beyond our control are going to keep us from launching today. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll call it a scrub and we'll, uh, we'll try again tomorrow. T zero approximately uh, one half hour earlier. Uh, nice try from the standpoint of the whole team, and uh, maybe we'll have better luck tomorrow. The crew got out of the shuttle and went to bed in anticipation of a second launch attempt to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. The launch time will be 30 minutes sooner at 4.27 a.m. Eastern Time in order to send the shuttle up when the telescope is almost directly overhead. After launch, the crew will conduct five or more spacewalks to replace mechanical, electronic, and scientific equipment aboard the telescope. The goal is to clear Hubble's fuzzy vision of the planets and the stars. John Holloman, CNN reporting. And as John said, weather permitting, Endeavour will be launched tomorrow morning at 427 Eastern Time. The launch window runs a little more than an hour. CNN plans live coverage. Time now to check the global weather forecast. For that, we turn to senior meteorologist Valerie Voss. Time for the Thursday forecast for Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and North America. Snow move across the Midwest of the United States as we see more rain and snow developing in the Pacific Northwest into British Columbia and Alberta in Canada. The Space Shuttle Endeavour on the mission designed to fix the vision-impaired Hubble. The next launch, by the way, will be attempted Thursday at 9.27 GMT, and CNNI will have live coverage of it. The U.S. Space Agency will try again to launch the shuttle Endeavour. High winds and low clouds prevented the shuttle from lifting off on Wednesday. The disappointed astronauts crawled out of the capsule shortly after sunrise. They will try again Thursday to begin their mission to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. But there's a less than 60% chance the weather will be good enough for a launch. I'll tell you, the second countdown for Shuttle Endeavour's most important mission is underway and going according to plan, according to... Hello? 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 Hello?
Houston now controlling, Endeavour's underway, rolled on course for an orbit with the Hubble Space Telescope. Endeavour already traveling about 300 miles an hour. Altitude one mile. Three engines on Endeavour have throttled back to two-thirds throttle to prepare the shuttle to pass through the area of maximum air pressure and go supersonic. Endeavour, go with throttle up. Roger, go with throttle up. Endeavour's three main engines now back at full throttle. All flight control positions are go. Altitude now 10 miles, 7 miles east of launch pad 39B. Endeavour speed 1,700 miles an hour. One and a half minutes since liftoff, Endeavour's Already used more than two and a quarter million pounds of propellant, and the shuttle weighs less than half of what it did at launch. Flight controllers are now standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rockets. Booster officer confirms a good endeavor. Two engine banjo. Roger, two engine banjo. Jettison of the solid rockets. That call also indicates that Endeavor could now perform an emergency transatlantic landing if needed. Endeavor, performance nominal. Roger, performance nominal. Also, Endeavor's performance as far has been just as planned. Altitude now 35 miles, 48 miles east of the Kennedy Space Center. Endeavour traveling 3,400 miles an hour. Boost also confirms a good jettison of the external fuel tank. Endeavour Houston, we see a nominal MECO, Ohms 1 not required. Roger Houston, Ohms 1 not required and it's a beautiful sunrise. It looked awfully good from here too.